This is a presentation that I made at the Bayfield Heritage Center in August of 2015 when I introduced the book that I wrote on the streets of Bayfield, Wisconsin. On March 24th, 1856, John Handley and his crew landed near the foot of Fant, or what is now called Manypenny Avenue, and built their two log shanties near their landing spot. So McAvoy's plan called for a series of blocks that each contained 20 lots. Each lot was to measure 40 feet wide by 120 feet deep in both the residential and the commercial sections of town. Although all of the streets and avenues were to be 60 feet wide, Broad Street and Washington Avenue were exceptions. They were both 80 feet wide. McAvoy probably intended that these two streets would be the commercial roads through town, although I never found any documentation to support that theory. Many of the blocks on the McAvoy plat map were drawn over unbuildable ravines, while other blocks were actually underwater in 1856. Hanley and his men landed at what is now Memorial Park, which is block 88, lots 11 and 12 and they built their shanties approximately where the marina store is located on block 89. Two docks were built during the town's first year. The Hanley crew built a dock at the foot of Rittenhouse Avenue and Charles Child built a second dock at the foot of Washington Avenue. The first street to be opened followed a foot trail from Child's dock at Washington Avenue toward the two log shanties. The street was not cut in a straight line. It started at the dock, went up Washington Avenue to First Street, then over one block along First Street to Rittenhouse Avenue, and up Rittenhouse to Second Street. One block of Front Street between Washington and Rittenhouse Avenues, and one block of Rittenhouse Avenue from Front to First Street would have been open during this period of time as well. As houses, stores, and hotels were built, the streets were slowly open, always to their full extent, and not necessarily in a perfectly straight line. For example, in 1862, a nine-foot wide wagon road down 2nd Street from Minipenny to the north limit was opened. 1st Street from Washington Avenue to the north limit was not opened until 1870s. In 1871, a wooden bridge was built by Captain T. J. L. Tyler over the big ravine at Washington Avenue, not at Rice Street. That bridge would not be built until 1894. In 1872, the town opened a portion of Rice Street from 3rd to 6th Street. And so it would have continued street by street, block by block. Other streets would have been cut as property was developed, primarily in the section of town east of Broad Street. The first street improvements were started in 1860 when the town board authorized the installation of a three-foot wide wooden sidewalk. Shade trees started to be planted along all of the streets and avenues. This is a picture of the Tate Drugstore that was built in 1883, and it shows the wood sidewalks. One man in particular, Captain Tyler, is credited with not only installing the wooden sidewalks and the wooden bridge across the big ravine at Washington Avenue, but also planting shade trees on the boulevards. During the summer months, cows and other livestock roamed freely through town, and they roamed freely until the early 1900s. This particular painting hangs in the Madeline Island Museum. The foreground is the Edsel Building, and the back is the Bell building. Because the cows were all over the place, they built fences around the homes, and this is a picture of the Stark House, which was actually built in 1905, but it's a good example of the fences that were put in. The first wooden courthouse built in 1875 shows the wooden boxes that were placed around the trees. The streets remained simple dirt roads that had to be graded and filled each spring and plowed in the winter. This maintenance work was all done by the residents using horse or ox-drawn graders. Without the extension of the railroad into Bayfield, the town was slow to grow. As of 1882, the town was uninhabited beyond Broad Street. But with the arrival of the Omaha train from Ashland in October 1883, the town began to boom. So, for example, there were 495 people living in the village in 1880. But by 1885, the population had tripled to a little over 1,400, and changes began to appear. Repairs were made to Front Street. New street lights with gasoline burners were installed along the streets. 
Men were hired to give all the tree boxes in town a heavy coat of whitewash, and dead shade trees were removed and replaced. All the houses, by the way, were whitewashed as well. In July, the section of Broad Street between Rittenhouse and Washington Avenues was opened, and several more streets and alleys were also opened, and additional wood sidewalks were installed. This is also a boom year in the town's construction industry, with additions and repairs being made to some of the older buildings, and a few fancy new homes were built, like like the Henry Hannum House, that one is on Washington Avenue, and the Thomas Ernst House on North 4th Street. An attempt was also made to straighten the streets. The people had previously built their homes and businesses as close to their property lines as possible, which often resulted in their buildings encroaching on the roadways that were set up by McAvoy. In 1883, the town had spent $1,000 to survey the village plat and mark all of the street corners with iron pipes. But nothing much was done until 1886 when the old sidewalks were repaired and new ones were laid, this time above the ground on a true grade and along the street lines. Many property owners were ordered to move their buildings back onto their lots in order for the sidewalks to be put down on the proper street lines. Mm -hmm.